All right, uh, the circuits question, FRQ number three, 2024, AP Physics 2. If I have any corrections, I will put it in a pinned comment. All right, so let's see. Circuit consists of ideal battery, EMF, Epsilon, four identical resistors, R1 each of resistance R. I shouldn't figure one. Uh, derive an expression for the current I1 through R1. Well, that's the current going, like basically the battery is going to come out. All the current is from the battery is going to go through this guy. So the easiest way to do this is just sort of collapse this into a single resistor and then just say like how much current's coming out of the battery. And that will give you how much current's going at R1. Okay, so uh, let's collapse these. Well, these two are in series because they have the same current. All right, so I can replace, I can get rid of that and replace this with 2R. So then it looks like 2R. And then the 2R and the R are parallel then because they now share a top and a bottom connection. So 1 over R equivalent is equal to 1 over R plus 1 over 2R, right? And this is 2 over 2R, which is going to be 3 over 2R. So then the R equivalent is going to be uh, 2 thirds R. So now, um, let me just kind of, uh, I should put that work down in here. And then just for the, for the purposes of the answer key. And then, um, and then uh, so that's the equivalent of those two together. And so now you think of it as a circuit as R and two thirds R with the battery, right? And then you're just saying like, well, you add one of those, the R equivalent is going to be five, ha five thirds R. So R total is going to be two thirds R plus R, which is five thirds R. And so the, um, the I1, the, I, the, the current that's coming out of the battery is just gonna be uh, V over R, which is epsilon over uh, five thirds R, which is gonna be three fifths epsilon over R. And that's gonna give you your I1 because all of the current coming out of here is actually gonna go through R1, right? Every 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 current that comes out of the battery goes through this R1. So whatever we solve for here happen is gonna be the same as R1. Now we wanna know R3. And so this is where we have to now look at like, okay, so what I found before was I found, let's go back to our original circuit. I, the whole point of the collapsing was that I could get the current coming out of the battery, which is here, but now it's gonna split between these two paths. And it's easier if you think of these as two parallel paths. Or um, you can if you want, it doesn't really matter. So then we want to think about, okay, what is the, we know that this voltage is epsilon. What is the voltage drop across this resistor? Because we know the current. So we're going to times R. This is three-fifths epsilon. Okay, and then by the loop rule, each of these has to have a whole drop of two-fifths epsilon. Right? Because by the voltage loop rule, right, we got, these got to add up to the whole epsilon. So now we know the voltage drop here is two-fifths epsilon. And so I3 is going to be the voltage divided by the R. And the voltage is now 2 fifths epsilon divided by the total resistance through this path because this dropped from there to there over 2R. And so that means it's 1 fifth epsilon like that. Okay, so that is the current in R. Oh, oops, epsilon over R. <laughs> okay, um, the partially completed bar chart shows the bar that represents the absolute value of the potential difference across the ideal battery. Um, okay, let's see. In figure two, draw the bar to represent the voltage across each resistor relative to the EMF of the ideal battery. The height of each bar should be proportional. Okay, so this is just sort of analyzing. We said R, we, we just calculated that R1 is going to have three fifths. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So three fifths is going to be across R1. Okay, then we go back to here. We say like, well, two fifths is across R2. So R2 is going to have two-fifths of the epsilon. And then R3 and R4, while we said this whole drop is two-fifths, they each have the same resistance and the same current. So um, they're going to have the same drop. That means one-fifths epsilon across each of those. Right? So it's going to be one-fifth across each of those. Right? So if you analyze a circuit, that part is correctly, then that part is pretty easy. Student claims that the rate at which energy dissipated can be expressed as three-fifths epsilon squared r. State whether the expression is correct or incorrect just by answer by referring to the derivations from part A or the bar chart from part B. Okay, so um, for us, power is going to be, well, because we calculated uh, the current, might as well just use I squared r. Um, this is the power through dissipated by the circuit. Oh, the entire circuit. 
Okay, so the the amount of circ the amount of power in the circuit is the same as the power from the battery because by conservation of energy, energy any power that comes out of the battery is going to be dissipated by the circuit. So we just look at the battery has a we're just going to do I times V, and we calculated the 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 volt the current through the battery was three fifths uh, epsilon over R. That's what we calculated in part A. And then the voltage across the battery is just epsilon, so that's three fifths epsilon squared over R. So we would say yes, uh, it is correct. Or sorry, correct. Um, if you wanted to use the bar chart, um, this is kind of interesting. You would probably do V squared over R, maybe for each of these. So you would say um, you would say like this is three fifths V squared over R, maybe. I don't, I, I'm not entirely sure. Um, yeah, I'm not totally sure what, would, I, I guess that would be the easiest way to do it in terms of this thing is like the energy used here is going to be the energy dissipated by these guys. And then you would just do V squared over R for each of them. And so you would say this is three fifths. So like if you were to do that, you would do three fifths squared over R plus two fifths epsilon not squared over R plus one fifth epsilon not squared over R plus one fifth epsilon naught squared over R. You could add those all up and you ought to, when you add them all up, if you factor out an epsilon squared and take that squared plus that squared plus that squared plus that squared, it should give you three fifths, okay? So that's not how I'm gonna do it, but that is another way you could solve that one, okay? Whichever way you prefer. All right, when the ideal battery is connected to the original circuit, uh, the rate at which the energy dissipated through by resistor R1 is P original. The ideal battery is now replaced with a non-ideal battery. The rate at which energy dissipated by resistor R1 in the new circuit is P new. Indicate whether P new is less. Well, so, okay. So the way you want to think about this is we're adding some resistance in here. So what, you know, in terms of power, you always think about the voltage and you always think about the current going through here. Now, because I've added resistance, the easiest thing to think about is it's a little bit hard to understand the exact voltage drop. Um, you could make an argument that the voltage drop would have to be smaller, but I think it's easier or a little bit more intuitive to say, well, I added a resistance, so we're definitely going to reduce the amount of current coming out of the battery. And if we reduce the amount of current and this guy gets all of the current, I goes down and the power is I squared R, the resistor is not changing. Why do I pick this instead of IV? Because I only want to focus on the fact that one of them is changing. I mean, technically they're both, both the voltage and the current are going to drop, but I mean, in terms of my argument right now is I'm just saying the I goes down, but I know the R is constant. So I'm going to use I squared R and I say like, well, you know, if the current goes down, then the power is going to go down. So the, the new one is definitely less. And as you could do, make an, uh, make an argument either way that because of the voltage loop rule, the voltage drop here has to be smaller, or you can make an argument because there's a greater resistance from the battery now that the total current's going to be less. So I'm going to use that argument. It's like the total current, Total resistance increases it's the, from the ideal source, from the source increases, which means less I, which means less I squared R. Okay, and so that, that is what I would use for that one, okay?